So why are we teaching all the stuff? Because you can be left behind in the world if you don't understand how vision works. So let's talk about what a vision is, how it impacts you, and let's start with why you must have a vision. Firstly, we're going to go to the famous scripture. We all know the scripture. Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 to 4. So let me quickly run through it without spending too much of time explaining it. The, Bible, the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Everybody say, write the vision. So when you, write, when you get a vision, the first thing you do is you write it down. Number two, you make it plain. What does it mean? You make it so simple for you to understand it and for everybody that reads it to understand it. For example, let's say you get a vision and you write this down. A silver golden creature came. It opened its wings and the wings had like sunlight go through it. And the creature said this, this, this to me. Now somebody reads it, they're going to say, golden creature, it's silver. How can you have a silver golden creature? I mean, it's just a... You're making the vision too complicated. Simply say, an angel visited me, and this is what the angel said. Can you see? A vision must not be complicated. If it's so complicated, you might get lost in your own vision. <laughs> or you might, be, you might have to add to your vision. So whenever you get a vision, whether it's a business vision, it's a corporate vision, you always write the vision down. And number two, you make it a simple, simple, plain definition of that vision. Three, that whoever, uh, whoever reads it may run with it. So number three, it must inspire other people. Your vision must inspire others. Number four, the vision is yet for an appointed time. That means when you, God gives you a vision, it is not for today, the next 10 minutes. It's going to come in the future. It has an appointed time. And in the end, the vision will speak. What does it mean? It means when the vision comes, the vision changes your destiny. Next, it will not lie. The vision is the truth because it comes from God. So he changes everything around you. It's not going to put you in trouble and get you off the track. It's a divine vision. Though it tarries, so it's going to take some time, wait for it. Don't be impatient. Impatient people don't collide with the vision because it will surely come. It will not tarry. It's going to come. Then there's a warning. It says, behold the proud. His soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. What does it mean? It means that if God gives you a vision and you're a proud person, you say, hey, listen, I've got my own ambitions. I've got my own agenda, my own plans. The Bible says that that, that you're not going to be successful in it because you're not upright in him. He's, your soul is not upright. But the just, those that follow God's vision, they do it by faith. That's what it means. The just shall live by faith. So there is a vision that God will give to you. Tell your neighbor, God will give to you. Now, what is a vision? And this is so powerful. A lot of people have just not got this. What is a divine vision? What is it? This is what it is. A vision is the revelation of God's dream and promise of what we will become someday. It can only be seen by faith. So let me say it again. God has a dream. God has a dream about you. Before you are born... God has a dream about you. There is something that he wants to see you become, attain, step into. He has a dream. He has a dream about you. And the vision is the dream God has about you. Let me put it in another way. How many of you here are parents? Put your hand up if you're a parent. Right? You've got children. So how many of you as parents, you have a vision for your child? Amen? There's certain things. You know, you might say, well... This is my son. When he grows up, he's going to be the world's greatest soccer player. That's my daughter. When she grows up, she's going to be a doctor. And, and he, he's going to find the cure for all the diseases in the world. And, and, and she, she's going to become this and she's going to become that. Now, you all have a vision for your children, right? Or in other words, you have a dream for them, you have a vision for them. Is that right? 
That's what you're expecting them to become. As a parent, you love your children so much, you have this expectancy of what they will become, what they will attain. The same way God has a dream, a vision about you, about what you will become when you grow up. But pastor, I am like 30 years old. In human terms, you're 30 years old. I'm talking about, in God's eyes, what you will become when you grow up spiritually. So God has a dream about you. Maybe his dream is that you will become an astronaut. Maybe God's dream is that you will become a, an evangelist. Maybe God's dream is that you'll become the most, uh, an author and you write books. So God has a dream about you. And that dream that God has about you, that expectancy that God has about your destiny is called a vision. Called a divine vision. Are you with me so far? So just like you as a parent, you have a dream about what your child will become. God has a dream about what you will become. So your dream about your child is your vision for your child. God has a divine vision for you. For every person on the earth. This is why, this is why I need to know what my vision is. Because why? I need to know what is God's dream for me. Well, well hold on. Why is it so critical that I must live God's dream? Now, just come back to you as a parent. How many of you as a parent have a dream for your child, and in your dream, you see your child suffering? How many of you in your dream for your child, you see your child in lack? You don't, isn't it? In your dream for your child, your child is successful. Your child has a bigger house than you have. In your dream, your child is wealthy. In your dream, your child has, has, has uh, created a legacy. That's the dream you have. Are you ready for this? The dream God has for you is that you, in the outcome, will be extremely successful, you will be wealthy, and you will make a name. So if you follow God's vision for your life, in other words, if you follow the dream God has about you, there are several things that will happen. Through that vision, number one, you will have peace. Number two, through God's vision for you, through God's dream for you, you will be successful. Number three, you will always be wealthy. Because God wants you to be the head and not the tail. So the dream he has, Jeremiah 29, 11, is to give you an expected end. Is to make you wealthy beyond measure. Number four, the dream God has for you, he says, I will make your name known. Come on, somebody. This is God's dream when he thinks about you. When he thinks about you. God never thinks and says, well, how can I make them suffer? How can I punish her? How can I punish him so he's miserable the rest of his life? That's not God's dream for you. God loves you. And so his dream is huge. It's beyond what you've been thinking. And that dream that God has is called a divine vision. Is everybody with me? So let's go back to this again. Let's get this clear in our mind. God has dreamt and he's dreaming about you. Leave the person next to you about you. In this dream, you are successful. In this dream, you are blessed. In this dream, you are full of joy. In this dream, everything falls in place. In this dream, you leave a legacy behind. That is the dream God has for you. Now, everybody's dream will be different, but it'll have the same components. Are you with me? So, for example, you can say, I want my daughter to become a doctor. I want my son to become a scientist. Now, that's two different dreams. But you want your daughter to be successful and you want your son to be successful. 
because you want the same outcome for both of them. The same way, although we have different visions, the outcome is the same. Are you with me so far? So what do we call this? We call this a divine vision. Divine vision. You have a vision that God has for you. And if you follow God's vision, it will lead you to wealth. It will lead you to peace. It will lead you to joy. It will lead you to success. Because it's His vision for you. Right? Are you with me so far? Amen. I'm glad you are. So tell your neighbor, God has a dream. It's called a vision. Now, how do I see God's dream for me? You can only see it through faith. Only through faith. And I'll show you the methods we use to find the, the dream God has about you. Amen? So let's go back here. Visions, therefore, is a type of futuristic picture that comes into our imagination and is implanted in our mind. Amen. God gives us a vision in the form of a seed for us, to give us hope for the future. The seed is a promise of things to come. So when God gives you a vision, it's like, you know, you take a normal seed. Let's just say you take an apple seed. And when you look at the seed, all you can see is a seed. You plant it in the ground, and you make sure the soil is right. You water it. You, you, you make sure that uh, there's no thorns around it. There's no rocks around there. And you come back, and you keep nursing it and nursing it. Eventually, the seed grows, becomes an apple tree, and starts to bear apples. That's what you do with a vision. When God gives you a vision, it starts as a seed. As a seed, you are responsible for nurturing it. As you nurture the vision, the vision starts to develop until it is fully manifested. It's like a seed. Now, watch this. So, the strangest thing is this. God has given to you a vision, yet most Christians don't have a vision. I even met people in business that have no vision. They have no vision. And instead... People take on someone else's vision. They don't have their own vision. They don't have a divine vision from God, but they're always adopting someone else's vision. So let me explain you this process. I found this picture uh, on the internet. It's a picture of a developer who is selling this building. So you can get developers who, who, who develop townhouses and complexes, condominiums, so on. And this developer has developed this thing. He's selling it. I'm sure you don't need to take this picture. You can go to any developer's site and look at their pictures. If you look at the picture here, it's a picture of an actual person that's walking. There's trees, and, and, and the picture looks really nice, isn't it? It looks really neat. There's only one thing. This picture is not real because the developer has not yet put up the building. But, but, it's what the building will look like once it is built. So the developer here wants to start selling the units. So how does he sell the units? He does not physically sell the units. Instead, he sells you the vision. Are you with me so far? So when you see the vision, you buy into the vision and you invest your money in the vision. You might go to the field where this building is supposed to be, and there's grass everywhere. There's no building. But you're not buying that. You are buying a vision that he's selling to you. Why does he sell you the vision? Because he needs to raise money. He needs to pay off his suppliers. Uh, uh, there could be a whole lot of reasons. He wants to make sure that the, the, the complex is finished on time. And, and you see the picture. You see the picture, and maybe you're driving past the road. You see a billboard with this big picture, and you say, Wow. I love to live there. I want to live there. Because what you're seeing, although it's not physically there, is you're seeing the end product. You are seeing a vision. Are you with me so far? Are you with me so far? So, 
he will advertise with pictures, videos, models of what the building would look like and, and what the finish would look like. And he might even put a sign, coming soon. But you're not bothered with the coming soon sign. You're looking at the building. So you want to be the first one to get the building. So you go on and, and you buy the building. You're buying a vision. So you and I operate in a divine system every day. Yet, it was not designed for the Babylonian system. It was designed for you. Let me give you another example. So you watch a TV program. In the TV program, you see a young man takes and he sprays himself with a deodorant. He then steps out of his house and 20 women come and mob him. <laughs> they jump on top of him. 20 women. So you see the video and you, and you make your mind up. I am going to go buy that deodorant tomorrow. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. What did the advertiser sell you? Did the advertiser sell you the product or did the advertiser sell you the vision? The vision. Ah. Ah. Woo. <laughs> so advertising is actually a vision process. The whole advertising industry is built on visions. So they sell you a vision and you buy a vision. So you might see a vision of someone jumping on this couch and they are relaxing and they can press a button and it massages your back. They press another button, it lifts your leg up and massages your leg. And you see the vision and you say, I got to have it. They sell you a vision. Now, where did they get this vision thing from? They got it from heaven. Here's the funny thing. Babylon stole the visions process, but the church never adopted it. So there are Christian businessmen who don't have a true vision. There are Christians who have no vision. You ask them, uh, what's your plans for your family, for your ministry? Well, we'll just see how things happen. We just trust in God. What's your vision? We trust in God. You've got no vision. But the world is operating. It's even making billions and billions on the vision process that God designed for you. Are you following me, church? We have dropped the vision and the world picked up the process. You and I are supposed to be operating in the vision. But we've got too distracted from it. Too distracted. Let's go on a little deeper. Remember, a vision is a dream that God has for your future. But today, we're going to fix that process. Amen? So what is a vision? A vision is a revelation of God's dream and promise of what you will become someday. In other words, God has a dream, a plan, and a purpose for your life. We call it a vision. The vision can only be seen by faith. You can't see the vision with your intellect. You can only see it with faith. I'm talking about God's vision. God gives you a vision in the form of a seed to give you hope for the future. The seed is a promise of things to come. The vision, therefore, is a type of futuristic picture that becomes imprinted in our mind. In other words, everyone else sees dead stuff. Nothing will happen. But you see the vision because it's imprinted in your mind. It's right here. That's the vision. Let's go on. The vision has to do with our ability to see a little bit into the future the way God sees. The vision God gives produces hope for the future. It's always greater than the one who receives it. What does it mean? That means if God gives you a vision and you're able to accomplish it intellectually. Let me say it again. If God gives you a vision and you're able to accomplish the vision intellectually, then it's not a divine vision. A vision that God gives you cannot be accomplished intellectually. Let's say, let's say you have a vision. You have a vision of, uh, 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 of coming up on stage and making a chocolate cake. Right? And you say, that's what God called me to do, to make a chocolate cake. 
Then you go and you Google the recipe and you learn how to make a chocolate cake and you come up and you make the chocolate cake. Is that a divine vision? No, it's not because you can intellectually do it. A divine vision is beyond you. It cannot be accomplished intellectually. It can only be accomplished through faith. Are you with me? That's how you know which is God's vision and which is man's vision. Man's vision has an intellectual path. God's vision has a spiritual path. Let's go on. So if the vision is easy, it's not a vision from God. Dreams and visions are elements that comprise the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So they are methods God used to communicate his plans. So God tells you the dream he has for you through dreams and visions. Look what Joel 2, 28 says. It shall come to pass afterward that I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Amen. So it's promised to every believer. You're going to have dreams. You're going to have visions. It's normal Christianity. And because there's dreams and visions, it's how God tells you, son, daughter, this is what I see. This is where I see your life going to. This is the future I see for you. This is how I want to raise you up. This is what I want to do in your life. And he communicates it through dreams and visions. God's vision for your life. Amen. Now, let's go. We're going to go a little deeper. The absence of dreams marks the end of visionaries. So when a person stops dreaming, they're no longer a visionary. And the moment you're no longer a visionary, everything around you dies. Everything around you dies. So let's take some examples. Let's say you own a business, but you have no vision for your business. How did you get the business? Well, my brother-in-law said it's a good opportunity to invest. And because, you know, my brother-in-law, he's so successful. He's so successful what he did. Therefore, I invested and I'm part of the business. Let me ask you a question. Who has the vision? Who has the vision? Not you. It's your brother's vision. Oh, it's quiet now. <laughs> you see, people are always selling you their vision. Just like the advertisers who sell you the deodorant. It's their vision. But God has a unique vision that's your vision. And you have to find out what is my vision that God has for me instead of buying someone else's vision or living someone else's vision. Are you with me so far? So that's why, you know, people get, I see sometimes people in business because I counsel so many business people. And they got no vision. No vision. Why are they even running a business? Well, we're just surviving. If you have no vision, you can't grow your business, make it successful. Because you lack vision. So let's talk about that. A church or a business will never grow beyond its leader's vision. So if you own a business, you should know where your business is going to go to. What, are the, what is the vision for your business? Where do you see your business in the next two months? Where do you see your business in the next five years? Where do you see your business evolving to? What is the next phase of this vision God's given to you? You need to understand that stuff. If you have no vision, if you are just there to have a business, you're going to struggle and suffer. Why? You're getting into something where your employees don't know where you're going, you don't know where you're going, and you're going to end up nowhere. So before you open a business, before you buy a business, the first thing you need to do is have a vision from God. If God gives you a vision for the business, it's going to be successful because you know where it's going to go to. If you have no vision, the business is going to go around in circles and struggle and struggle. And you're going to be in financial trouble. You're not going to have cash flow. Why? Because you are trying to live a Babylonian system. Let's try someone here. There are two systems. The one system which unfortunately Christians, some Christians follow, is the Babylonian system. 
The other system is the kingdom system. Problem with the Babylonian system is, the Babylonian system can only give you Babylonian results. It can't give you supernatural results. Are you with me so far? So let's look at an example. Let's say, let's say you buy a business. The Babylonian system tells you, you'll only see a turnover after one and a half years, after nine months. That's what, the, that's what your MBA tells you, right? So if you go with the Babylonian system, you can never have a supernatural intervention and see a turnover in the first six months. Why? Because you're operating in a Babylonian principle. In a Babylonian system, you'll do your SWOT analysis. And you'll say, uh-uh, I can't put a business there. Uh-uh, I can't do that because the economy says this. The, the, rand, the exchange rate says that. The experts say that. Therefore, I can't buy my business. I can't evolve there because you're following Babylon. So you can only get the results of anybody who follows Babylon. The supernatural can't come in and change the situation. However, if you walk in the supernatural and you get a divine vision from God, the conditions of the natural do not impact your business. Oh, let me say it again. You gotta catch this. You gotta catch this. I bought a restaurant many years ago. Pastor Jason, I bought a restaurant. We made a 300% return in 30 days. Man, that's not possible. Because you're following Babylon, that's why you're saying it's not possible. You're living in Babylon's principles. So you can only get what Babylon gets. There was a man. He followed the vision of God. He went to another country. In this country, all the businesses are closed down because there was a severe drought. The people were selling their property at next to nothing. Why? Because the businesses had all collapsed. This man went and he bought a piece of land. Drought land. Come on. Which bank will finance you if you're buying drought land? But you see, he followed the heavenly vision. He buys the land which is dry. There is no water. 